Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Supergirl. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, obviously Supergirl is dealing with the fact that the matter is, hey, everyone pretty much hates her because they look at her as kind of a terrorist. Obviously, she's got Alex and Lena on her side, but the fact that the matter is the entire city has turned against her. She tries to save this dude. People nearby pull out guns, start shooting at her. Literally causing a situation where the car was exploding. It's like there's someone that's literally here trapped that needs help and you're doing this. And she says to do, but for him it's like, I don't understand. You saved my life, but you attacked the White House. The fact is my daughter looked at you like a hero. And now it makes Car feel bad. Because you know, she regardless of her situation, it's like people can believe whatever they want. I'ma save the day, but then it's like one mistake, and now it's like everyone in the city has turned against her. But then you know, Alex makes up a good point. It's like Ben's been preparing the city for months. Basically turning everyone's perspectives on the fact is of what it's like with the whole alien situation. Him being who he is, I mean, that's the whole point. Like, shows you just how much foresight Lex has because he's been waiting for this moment. Because, yeah, there'll be some people who wouldn't necessarily be all in the belief of Supergirl being the bad guy. Some people are still kind of on the fence, but kind of still leaning towards the negative side of things. But it's just because of Ben and the just propaganda that he's been spewing and kind of putting this perspective out there. I mean, the perspective that's kind of already been laid about just because of everything that's happened over the course of this series on Earth 38 with all the alien attacks and stuff like that has led to this situation so a lot more people are more inclined to believe oh I can't yeah Supergirl would do that she's an alien and stuff like that what I thought was kind of pretty neat is that Alex is like yeah I checked to see if it was Bizarro but that's not the case I'm like hey it's always nice to see the little tidbits here and there of like okay that's something else that carries over from season one whether we'll actually ever see anything come of that Bizarro situation never but it's still nice to know hey that's still in the continuity somewhere whether or not they utilize it in the future still because that's always a thing of, like, you're not 100% sure what's... I, I bring this up, like, every time. I don't know how much of Season 1's continuity 100% carried over. Some stuff has, other stuff we're not really 100% sure where it stands. But it, regardless, uh, regardless of all of that, instead of irregardless, nevertheless. Um, so, Lena and Carl, well, Supergirl, go to the prison Lex was locked up in. Um, obviously, they force the warden to help. And they go to Lex's cell. They're reading through his journals. Man, is it super messed up on Lena's part and Supergirl's part because she reads a journal that's like, oh yeah, here's everything wrong with Superman. And then Lena reads one being like, yep, here's everything that's wrong with me since the day I was born. It's like, Jesus, Lex. That's so interesting. I'd love to understand what Lex's perspective is on what's wrong with Superman. I'd love to know, like, to get to the nitty gritty. Just because obviously you see the aspect of, like, he sees that, like, oh, this is a god I'm walking amongst men. There's that whole perspective. But, like, the fact of the matter is, I want to know what else is there that's bubbling beneath the surface that makes Lex hate Superman the way he does. So I just think that's kind of fascinating in itself, but also just everything about Lena, it's like, geez. He does have this weird thing where he can compliment and tear her down at the same time because Lena read another journal where it's like, oh yeah, it's pathetic how she's just so desperate for my approval, but the fact is if she realized how smart she is, she'd realize that she doesn't need it. And it's like, see what I mean? It's such a double-edged sword of Lex. There is a part of him that looks down on his sister for looking up to him but and being wanting to... Uh, get his approval but there's another part of him that is proud of her because he does see how smart she is and it's like I think he's waiting for her to rise up to her full potential and so until then he feels like she's always going to be in his shadow I feel like even if she did reach her full potential I'm sure he's still like I'm still miles above you and stuff like that so it is kind of interesting to kind of see the circumstances of like obviously them dealing with their drunk father and all that stuff because I would forgotten to bring this up last episode that Lena's mom had pointed out, like, Lena had pointed out the fact that, oh, Lexa is coming to kill you. Oh, you thought your son that you cherished and stuff like that? Oh, it's like, no, he wants you dead. I guess because of stuff dealing with their dad or maybe the fact is of uh, just her, him, her in general. Maybe she, when she pushed him, maybe it's like she's small minded and she's, I don't know. I wonder, I guess because she let or left them a lot of times with him and he had his issues so I guess that's what pissed her off I'm guessing I don't what you know what's pissing him off about his mom I don't know it's just kind of an interesting thing so this little detail about his dad getting drunk and kind of getting pissed and stuff like that makes me think like it had that might be part of the reasons why he kind of is pissed at his mom too nevertheless 
What's interesting though is there's this dude named Steve who's in a cell fairly close nearby and obviously he does not like Supergirl. He's not a fan. Little tidbit of information I think is kind of interesting. The actor who plays Steve, uh, that dude who's basically like a whistleblower essentially, that's the actor who played Mozzie in White Collar who he was also in that with Matt Balmer, who played Neil Caffrey. Matt Balmer currently playing Larry, a.k.a. Negative Man, on Doom Patrol. It's just like, dude, like, I lost my mind. I was like, Mozzie, the first time I saw him. Like, that's not the only thing I've ever seen him in, but it's the thing I associate with that actor the most. It's just because I love him as, love them as Mozzie. It's so good. If you've never seen White Collar, you really should. It's a really good show. I keep saying irregardless. Ignore me. Uh, regardless of all that, um... You can understand his position on things because for him, he looks at Supergirl as more, you are more of a hammer than a scalpel. Because it turns out this dude kind of exposed a lot of government secrets, like, you know, a lot of uh, drone attacks and stuff like that. He leaked a lot of documents, but he looks at Supergirl as someone like the moment you touch something, you ruin it. And obviously Supergirl takes that person because she's like, I'm trying to help people. But for him, he's just, you know, almost calling her narcissistic just because it's like, putting yourself in the middle of all these situations. Like, for Supergirl, it's like, people who believed in me hate me, and people who hate me have even more of a reason to hate me now. And now, you know, Supergirl, I loved it when uh, she's just like, okay, I'm gonna handle all the released prisoners because Otis released everybody. And she has to walk down the hall, you see her kind of go, <sighs> because she has to deal with this and everyone's coming up to her and she's just like knocking people out and pushing them in their cells. It's like, there's nothing you can do. She's literally the girl of steel. There's no nothing you hit her with will make any impact until she ends up fighting Otis, which he's full blown um, a Mattello now. Um, but I love that fight, and I love the whole situation of Kara was able to kind of fool him by dressing up like herself, and he's like, wait a minute, this is a male prison. What are you doing here? She's like, I'm a reporter for CatCo. I was doing a report on prison uh, reform. Do you have anything to say? He's like, no, nah, like the fact is I don't trust the press. Basically saying that they don't get the grand picture of everything, so they have a tendency just to parachute in any situation that they don't really understand. And he walks away. I'm like, Carr is so lucky that he's an idiot. I love it so much. I love it so much. It's so good. You literally just saw Supergirl in this direction, and there's some woman here, and just like, you're letting that slide. I just, it just... Like, I think that would not work if it were if it were anyone else. It's because he's such an idiot. And lo and behold, she runs into Steve, and Steve is like, Oh my god, I'm a huge fan of you. The fact that matters, the paper, the, the columns you write about aliens and stuff like that. He just really admires her. So it's interesting. It's that complicated thing of like, Yeah, I don't like you as Supergirl, but I love you as Kara. It's kind of interesting because it kind of reflects uh, Lena's relationship with Supergirl for a while. It's like, Love you as Kara because I don't know Kara and Supergirl. The same person I hate Supergirl because of their complicated relationship. Which is also like obviously there's still aspects of like oh yeah Lena's still hiding stuff from Kara slash Supergirl about everything because she still doesn't want because obviously like there's a picture she finds of the dude I don't blinking on his name the dude that died as part of her hair and nail trials and she kind of covers it from Supergirl because she knows if she does if she doesn't Supergirl like I think for her it's just like. Once again, because she kind of brought it up before and she was trying to get in on Supergirl about like, oh, you just look at me like this and stuff like that. Like, you're on your high horse and stuff like that. But it's like, because she doesn't, you know, I guess she doesn't want Supergirl to look at her like that. You know, it's like they're kind of in a better place. So the last thing she wants is to complicate things with the truth and all that. Especially because they're trying to clear her name and just get in the way of everything. But... I thought that was kind of fascinating. What was really interesting, though, too, is it shows for uh, Supergirl, like, the dangers of her being who she is. Because the fact is, under these circumstances, because everyone's so pissed and just the way the world is right now, like, the laws and everything, like, martial law being put in, like, curfews and stuff like that, because of that, like, the soldiers are willing to, like, shoot anyone to get through her. That would even mean the inmates. And even the local car is like, these aren't the best people, but they don't deserve to die just because I'm here and they're willing to blast you anyone for that say. So she ends up, you know, knocking them all down just so she can make sure that the guards don't interfere. I do love that Lex ended up blowing up Curtis. It's like, not Curtis, Otis. And that's interesting. He's like, oh, stay here. This is what I deserve. What do you mean? And it's like, wow. He, I mean, I guess he figured it was kind of like a one shot, kind of uh, used as an opportunity to kind of cover everything up while also potentially killing Supergirl and maybe even my sister. Eh, oh well, I didn't get the chance. Oh well, who cares? You know, I guess he kind of chalks it up and it's like, uh, there was a small chance of it working, but uh, regardless, I guess that's the whole situation, which just shows you just how quickly he's willing to use and just toss people aside. Luckily for Otis, he was able to get rebuilt. 
I wonder, is it more of a situation where they literally piece them together, or did they just, like, did they make, I mean, they did make, like, multiple Metellos, so I'm just wondering if they just kind of hook his brain up to a different body. It's like, oh, we made a whole bunch of bodies, and we just transfer your data over into another body we made. They might have literally just pieced them back together. Who knows? I just thought that was kind of fascinating. But it does kind of give Supergirl a different perspective because Lena could have been in trouble. Everything that, you know, Alex is dealing with at the DEO because, you know, Ben shows up there because he wants guns, weapons in particular to help them stop Supergirl and trying to lure her into a trap. And for Supergirl, and Kara realizes, like, her being Supergirl causes more harm than good. It's like, Lena could have gotten hurt. Like, Alex could have, like, led to a complication at her, at the DEO, as well as getting those prisoners hurt. It's like, being Supergirl, there's a moment I have to just, Supergirl can't be in action right now, because I will cause more harm than good, even though I have the best of intentions, so... I just thought it was kind of fascinating, and it's one of those situations where it's like, this is the moment Kara Denver comes in and shows her strength. And so... She's, you know, talking to Steve, and he ends up giving her a flash drive. It's like the pen is mightier than the sword. In this case, mightier than the cape. Like she can do more to bring Lex to justice as Kara than she can as Supergirl right now, because being Kara Danvers is her most powerful weapon, which works to her benefit. Because remember, the president went the whole thing of like, oh, I want your identity, and now it's like, luckily, because she didn't give her identity, she can operate as, you know, Kara Danvers. To be fair. You know, Lex, as well as the Red Daughter, know Kara's real identity as Kara Danvers. So, there's that whole situation. So, that still can come up of her uh, impersonating Kara in some shape or form, but we'll see. So, there's that. Uh, I'm curious to find out, like, what information they end up getting from the flash drive. Uh, there's every, well, since I was talking about it, everything at the DEO, because it's like, oh, hand over your, because obviously Haley doesn't believe that Supergirl's behind all this, but she kind of has no choice, because she believes in following orders. You even have Alex going to Kelly for advice about this whole situation of like, oh, what should I do in this situation? And for Kelly... She was saying that basically, rather than getting angry at someone, you appeal to what's most important to them. In this case, it's Haley's daughter. And it's interesting, too, because Alex is like, oh, I should have come to you first. I'm like, it's just her smiling and stuff like that. It's like, that didn't just seem like a friendly thing. That seemed like more. Like, I mean, we know that Alex is dating, which is so interesting. That's never come up. Which is, I think that's so interesting. Uh, I guess, I mean, it's just, I never, I guess because superhero shows can't really dedicate a whole bunch of time to relationships like that in, in certain regards. I mean, we focus a lot on her and Maggie's relationship, because I guess that was her still figuring herself out, and so what that relationship meant for Alex as a character, I guess that was a big focus. But it's like, oh yeah, we casually bring up the fact that she, she's dating and stuff like that. But part of me was like, oh, was that kind of like something potentially there? Uh, you know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe that was just me reading too much in that situation. It just seemed like that was kind of like a... Oh, there might be allusions to something else happening there, but ne nevertheless, Alex does bring this up to Haley, but Haley got pissed because it's like, don't you dare use my daughter in this situation. Because the fact of the matter is, Haley is a very moral person, but the fact is, you got to recognize this is a very immoral situation because we're leading Supergirl into a trap just so Ben Lockwood and the uh, his people can just like execute her. And so when the time comes, though, Haley does. You know, one Supergirl, you know, send out the double press because she ended up figuring it out. I am curious how she ended up finding it out. I guess because she's not. I'm, I'm just still curious. Like, how did you figure that out? But um, nevertheless, for her, it's like she's always followed orders because she, everything she's ever done has always been for the good of her country. But the fact of the matter is now her daughter's scared because of like the martial law, the curfew and all that stuff. Even one of her favorite teachers went missing. He's an alien. So it's like, hey, maybe he's hiding, but I can't necessarily just tell my daughter that maybe he's hiding because there might be something more sinister at play there. You know, maybe he got taken by the government or something like that. And it's like this world, the way things are coming up, it's like she doesn't want her daughter to kind of live in a world like that. Like I said, she always did something that was for the betterment of many but obviously it's like well what about the few that kind of get caught up in this like her daughter she doesn't want her daughter to be kind of caught up in this whole situation of the world being it as it is because it's like how can i be the moral compass to my daughter because she's looking towards me how can i be that moral compass if i'm sitting by and allowing this stuff to happen and being a part of it you know so it's interesting because it puts Haley in this very you know compromising position because she always believes in following orders but even she recognizes you know the sad aspects of this whole situation of like there is wrong in this situation especially you know there's a lot more implications in this whole ordeal you know so I thought that was kind of fascinating and like I said I think this will 
you know, it's going to be interesting because I think it's bringing, you know, Haley and Alex closer in this regard. And I think they can, you know, counter each other more in this situation. All the while, you also have everything going on with Brainy, which I love Brainy being like, I am class Destine because Alex is telling him to keep it on the low if he decides to delete the alien registry. And then he's like, I got this and kind of yelling it. She's almost just kind of like, oh, shut up, Brainy. And she's walking away. I love it. But he's in his moral dilemma of like, well, not moral dilemma. It's the potential outcome of like, well, what do I do? If I delete the file, that means I'm protecting people. But at the same time, maybe there'll be backlash from it. And I'll just cause more harm than good. And it's like a 50-50. Goes to Nia. Who's the, it didn't even click in my head. of like, oh, you went to Nia. I thought you went to her because, of, you know, for her advice in this situation. In which her advice was to follow your gut. He doesn't believe in that because it's like more like, oh, it's all, in, you know, follow your brain, the logical route and stuff like that. But then it was like, oh, yeah, Nia's a dreamer, right? She can tell the future. So he's like, okay, so I need you to tell me which way to go. So she says the opposite. And he's like, no, obviously I got to delete file. She's like, see, the gut feeling. All I had to do was sometimes all you have to hear is the wrong choice for you to find out. Okay, so this is the right choice. But later on, she has a dream about Agent Liberty and his men showing up there and taking him. Because it turns out, and sadly, he's already deleted the file, but he made sure to keep a copy in his head just in case it's necessary later on. But this does put a target on his back. But I love him being like, yeah, but the fact that it matters, you're still not 100% good at interpreting your dreams. So you could still be wrong about this. Which the fact is they were dressed up like Agent you know, Liberty and stuff like that, which says a lot because later on the president ends up allowing him to deputize um, – any the children of liberty which even the lady that was there was almost like are you wait what like even she was kind of like what the fuck are you doing like they're not yeah i get this whole situation but the fact is you're that desperate to uh do that with supergirl you know going after supergirl i get it you want to take her down but you're going as far as that like because i'm sure there's a lot of people to be like yeah no matter what there's still kind of a gang of people just doing what they're literally like a gang doing whatever they want so that's definitely going to be interesting because I'm sure that's going to lead to a lot more aliens kind of being put on, like, big pressure being put on a lot of aliens just so that they'll probably force Supergirl out. Potentially, it's like, oh, if we force her hand, she'll come out to try and save aliens that are in danger. That might be the perspective they're going with. Maybe not. But irregardless, I keep doing that. It's literally, I don't know why I keep saying irregardless. Um, the fact is that they might think that maybe pushing enough aliens will lead them to Supergirl. Anyway, it's hard to say. Uh, so it's definitely going to be interesting on that front. Because uh, I was wondering about that, because like the fact is that they showed up in their suits. I'm like, they wouldn't show up in their suits. They'd just be like, oh, in regular outfits. They wouldn't be in like um, their Children of Liberty uniforms. But now, kind of seeing the President's order, so it's like, okay, because obviously, like, Nia's dreams are up for interpretation. So it's like, is that supposed to represent the fact is that they're going to grab him at whatever chance they get? Or is that supposed to be a representation of, like, they were going to get him the legal way or something like that? The fact is they were in their Agent Liberty outfits makes me think, like, yeah, they were coming after him illegally trying to grab him because they somehow found out that he has the only file in his head. I don't know how they're going to find that out, but that's definitely going to be interesting. The another side of things is everything going on with Jimmy. Obviously, he's going through therapy, getting a little bit of help. And that's all his perspective on things. I didn't agree. Like, it's not that I agree with it. I find it interesting. Because for him, it's like, I'm guardian. I'm a hero. I'm supposed to be protecting people. People look up to me. As a hero, I should be able to get over my PTSD. Because for him, he thinks it makes him weak. It's like people rely on me, and I can't. Like, as a hero, I shouldn't need help. I should be able to just get over this. Which, to be fair, you should know. Obviously, it's that situation of, like, you know, you internalize a lot of stuff. But it's like, you know, Kara is stronger when she has you guys to back her up. Because, you know, obviously, she tries to handle a lot on her own. But she also relies on you guys when the time comes. But obviously, for Jimmy, I think it's a thing of, like being scared to. I mean, it's not the easiest thing to ask for help under any circumstances, but especially under his circumstances when he doesn't believe he needs it because it's like, I'm a hero. I should just be able to deal with this myself. But his therapist is telling that it will work, but it will take time. But it seems that like every time he has a panic attack about this whole situation, the heronel kicks in and it does something to him, which is interesting. His eyes are going black like that. And part of me is wondering, and j just throwing it out there, you don't think this is going to create like a Doomsday type of situation. Now, that'd be interesting. I mean, because we don't know if Doomsday is in this continuity, which I always think is kind of interesting. Because initially, that's what I was thinking, like, was what Rain's whole situation was going to be. I thought Sam was going to end up being Doomsday, but it ended up being old Rain's situation. Which, it would be interesting, because obviously, like, the actor who plays Ben is uh, is Sam Whitware. I always, because both Sam's from the, um... 
American, North American being human. They're both named Sam, but I always blank on the other Sam's last name. But I'm pretty sure, yes, yeah, Whitworth in this one. But uh, he played Doomsday in Smallville, so it'd be interesting if it turns out that this, that Jimmy ends up becoming like Doomsday or something similar. Uh, what's also interesting is, you know, obviously Krypton, which is coming back for its second season, obviously, like, you know, Doomsday pops up in that. If you've seen the trailers, if not, I kind of spoil that for you. But if you've seen season one, you kind of know that. But nevertheless, I caught myself that time. I'm sorry. Um, it's it's going to be interesting to see. Because I, I figured he'd get powers and stuff like that. Because Lex ended up getting powers. But I thought the whole point was to kind of separate it. But I guess like by separating it, you know, the, the superpowers aspect does play its part. And I guess helping with the recovery and stuff like that. But nevertheless, I'm curious to see what ends up happening with Jimmy. Like, is this going to be a positive power thing or not? Especially because now Kelly is involved too, and they're like, Jimmy's like, we're going to have to go talk to Lena. And it's like, is Lena going to tell him the truth? And that's going to complicate things already, considering the fact that he's already, you know, dealing with the PTSD of being shot. I'm so interested to see what the next episode has in store for us. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about to the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good night.